when should we use channels and when should you use weight groups? It's a question that recently came up in my Discord community. And by the way, if you're not yet inside of that beautiful community with over, I think already 4,000 people, uh, basically learning from each other each and every single day, 24 seven, you should basically do it right now. The link is in the description. Also, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing, um, give me a thumbs up and leave some questions in the comment. I love you, much appreciated. By the way, guys, Black Friday is coming up and I'm giving away 20 seats with 60% off for the full-time Godev program. It's a program where we're going to cover the introduction to Golang. We are going to cover mastering concurrency. Um, we are building a JSON API backend, a hotel reservation API backend. We are building microservices uh, from scratch. And with the Go Kit, I'm covering how to land a job and we also have this bonus, my treat to you, is mastering core blockchain development, uh, all inside of the program. 60% off for the first 20 seats. So when should we use channels and when should we use weight groups? So basically, a weight group is a way for synchronizing and a channel is a way for communication. Although you could say, yeah, but we can also use channels for synchronization, that's true, but weight groups are basically a very easy and convenient way to quickly synchronize go routines or whatever you want to have synchronized. So let's take uh, a closer look here with an example. So for example, I'm gonna make here a function do work or something, I don't know, do work. We're gonna give this a D, it's gonna be a time duration, right? And we're gonna say here, FMT, print um, doing work. Right, boom, 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 just like that. We're gonna do a time sleep of D, and then we're gonna copy this FMT statement here, and we're gonna say um, work is done, something like that. Yes, that should be good. So basically, um, yeah. So let's say we're gonna have do work uh, time second times two, and we're gonna copy this do work function again, and we're gonna say four seconds, right? So let's say you have two functions here, Right, and let's actually do something like uh, a start. It's going to be a time now, and then we could do something like FMT, print f, not print ln f, print f, print f. And then we're gonna say um, work took percentage f new line uh, seconds maybe. And then we're going to put the time since start in here, right? So if we run that, right? So it's doing work, the work is done, it's doing work again, and then it's basically going to complete and it's going to tell us that the work took six seconds. Well, why six seconds? Very easy, quick math, two seconds plus four seconds is six seconds. Yes, that's completely true. So basically, uh, in Golang, we have a very easy way to schedule <coughs> functions into another Go routine, which basically means we can actually, uh, it's not actually theoretically true, I'm gonna say, but we can run these functions at the same time, but take that with a grain of salt, right? But hey, something like that, right? So <clears throat> why are we, uh, why should we do that? Well, basically if we can run these two function, if we can schedule these two functions at the same time, it basically means we only need to wait for the weakest link, right? And what is the weakest link? It's basically the four seconds. That's basically what is gonna take us the, lo the, the longest time, right? So how do we do that? In Golang it's very simple, we could do, Prefix that with go, prefix that with go, super easy. These two functions are basically scheduled in another go routine. Right? So what's gonna happen if we run that? Well, <clears throat> if we run that, the problem is the work took basically one millisecond, nanosecond, whatever this microsecond, I don't know even know what it is. But that's because we basically schedule these two functions in another go routine but our program is accident. So there's no way we're gonna synchronize these go routines with our main program. So how do we do that? Well. You can do it with channels, but I think it's gonna be a little bit, that's, that's just an overhead. I think we can just use weight groups, which is basically exactly why that thing is in the, sta in the standard library. So how can we do that? Well, we can do something like uh, the Ouija is going to be a sync uh, weight group, right? Just like that. <clears throat> and then we need to basically pass this weight group into these functions here, right? Just like that. You can make a global, whatever. Uh, so we don't need to put it into this function, but it doesn't really matter, right? So we're gonna say that the Ouija is going to be a sync weight group, uh, just like that. And we're gonna say here that each time 
the function is completed, we're gonna basically say VG done, right? So we're gonna basically tell the wait group like, hey, listen, the work is done. Easy peasy, right? So <clears throat> we need to give this basically by reference like that. That's pretty fine. So now we need to basically tell how many counters we need to increment for this wait group, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna say here VG add, and because we have two two times the work we need to run, you could also call add into this uh, do work function if you want. So we're gonna say VG add two. Why? Because we're going to have two functions, two workers, two worker functions, let's say, that are going to be scheduled. So we're gonna add two here. We're gonna spin off the work. And then of course, at the end, we need to basically wait until these two functions are done, right? So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So let's run this function, right? So it's doing work at the same time. So the two seconds is done, then the four seconds is done. But now we can see that we only needed to wait for the weakest link, which is basically exactly four seconds, right? And there's not much things we needed to do, right? We just have, uh, we just added a wait group into our function and we communicate that we are done here and we add just two of these counters um, and that's it, right? If you add three of these counters, it's gonna be a problem because if we run the function then, right? If we run the program then, the problem is we are going to, these workers are gonna do their job but now it's gonna say, hey, yo, listen, all go routines are asleep, we have a deadlock, why? Well, because the program, the compiler already knows that if these uh, worker functions basically call VG done, but there is still one increment, right? There is still one uh, left, but nobody's calling that, uh, just like your girlfriend, nobody's calling that. So basically, um, the program knows that, the compiler is smart enough to know that, and it's going to notify you with a panic, like, yo, we have a deadlock, please fix your code, right? So that's basically synchronization. So why ca why are we using wait groups here? Because there is no such message that needs to be communicated, right? There is no such return value or something, some result this function has that we need to use into some other logic, right? So, but what if we, what if do work is going to, uh, for example, do work is going to return a string, right? A result, right? So, um, well, then there is no way for us to communicate that with a wait group. Well, that's where channels come into play. So let's basically make a very simple, simplified um, example here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna delete this wait group, right? Because we don't need it. And then we are going to, uh, we need to use channels. So this return, I'm, I'm gonna make it wrong first so you know why. So let's do return. Um, that's a good question actually, uh, because it's gonna be the same, it's the same function. How can we actually fix that? Um, I'm gonna do s string here so we actually have a different thing here for debug purposes, right? We're gonna return s, that's the thing. Uh, close your eyes. So basically, we're gonna delete this wait group. We don't need it anymore. Go do work, uh, just like that. Work one. We're gonna call this work two, right? Uh, no wait group here, right? So basically, what's gonna happen is that um, what we put into this function, we basically gonna use that as the result. So we actually can debug that, right? So enable to communicate this, we need to have channels, right? So let's make a channel. We're gonna call this uh, a rest channel or make it result channel, which is going to be a channel of string, right? Just like that. So now we need to, or we make it a global, or we just put it into this function. So let's do, uh, use it as an argument here. So I'm gonna say the result channel here. What the fuck is going on here? We don't need that, result channel here, and the result channel here, right? Um, so then we can do something like, I don't know, rest one. It's going to be, um, let's read from the channel here and then print it out, to be honest, rest one. Let's make it very simple, guys. It's not, it's just a very simple explanation so you can actually experiment with that and hopefully it gives you some more context on when are we going to use, when is a good, a good way to use, um, a good use case to use wait groups and when is a good use case to use channels, right? Uh, so don't take this uh, too production ready stuff, right? Some people are freaking out, some people love it, some people freaking out, hey, 
uh, it's very hard to balance my my shit, right? So uh, what's going on? Okay, so now we have this S. It's going to be the string, yada. And now we're going to have this uh, channel here. So we're going to say chan string, right? Something like that. And instead of returning, right? Instead of returning, because why? We have this go here, right? There is no way for us to basically have a return value, or we need to basically do a closure function. But still, a retur returning here is not is not the play, right? Instead of returning, we are going to the del delete return statement here, and we are going to use this rest channel, right? And instead of returning, we're going to say a rest channel, and we're going to put in string here, right? A lot of people are going to be confused. Anthony, why are you doing this S string here? Well, it's basically because we have one function and... You know, maybe we should use a random thing. Actually, to be honest, that could be... Um, yeah, let's do that. Because it's going to confuse people. I already know. It's confusing me. It's confusing me already. So we're going to delete this thing. So we're only going to have a rest channel. And then, in order to do this, we're going to do an FMT. S print, maybe. S print. F, probably. Then we're gonna say rent, no, uh, work percentage D. And then we're gonna say here, uh, rent int n uh, 100, something like that, right? Random number between 100, 0 and 100, something like that. Yeah, I'm happy, I'm happy with this. So we're gonna do work, put in the result channel here, um, yeah, something like that. Perfectly fine. Let's let's run it. Not sure it's gonna work. Let's see. Boom. Right. So we're doing the work at the same time, but then we're gonna see that we're gonna have um, work is done here, and this is the result. Actually, we're gonna make it more clear for you guys here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we're gonna do. Um, the result of the work, and then we're gonna do like an error or something, just like that. Right. Let's run it again. Go run main.go boom still early i'm sorry need to warm up so we're doing the work the work is done the result of the work is 40 uh 54 and the other work is done and the result is 30 and it took us four seconds right so that's basically how you can um use channels and able to communicate results that are basically uh being computed in, in some other Routine, right of course a lot of people would say yeah but now you have two of these functions what what happens if we have three right let's say we have three here right with eight seconds that's actually too much six seconds for example uh then we need to do something like this right we need to copy the whole shebang here right something like this boom and then paste that in here rest three print rest three so you see it's a little bit tedious right so what you could do in this case is um use something like this right you're gonna delete that all this bullshit we can actually loop over the channel for the people that didn't know, right? You can say uh, the result is going to be, uh, what's going on here? I'm thinking range. It's range over the result channel, just like that, right? And then we can actually say uh, FMT println, and we're going to print the result, something like that, right? The problem is, and you're going to see what's going what's gonna to happen. So we're going to do this. It's doing the work, and then it's basically going to loop over all these results. You can see what is happening, 70, 63, and then 9. But then the problem is that we get an error. All go routines are asleep. We have a deadlock, right? So why is that? Well, that's because the compiler is just too smart. Golang is just too smart, guys. So what's going to happen is that um, we have a weasel channel here, right? And we have three functions that are basically doing work and are writing into this channel when they are done, right? So we are looping here. The compiler knows that we're going to loop three times. But after three times, nobody is going to actually send stuff into that channel. So that basically means that this loop here is never going to stop, right? It's going to keep looping, just like my anxiety. It never stops. So in able to do that, we need to do again some kind of a synchronization way, right? Some some kind of a way to synchronize that. So, and then you can use a, uh, a weight group again, right? So why should we use a weight group? Let's make this actually a, a global variable so we don't need to hassle again. So I'm gonna say v, v g is going to be, um, uh, pointed to a sync weight group, right? Something like that, sync weight group, real quick like that. Then we can make this VG going to be an, sync weight group like this let's do vg add three or something right we have three functions here perfectly fine um let's spin this in a go routine just like that 
Why do we need this in a go routine? Well, because actually we don't need to do that. Well, we need to do that. It doesn't really matter. There's a couple ways to solve this, right? Because if we don't put this into a go routine, there is no way we can actually... Um, it's going to block, so there is no way to close our channel. No way to basically uh, do some other logic, right? Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to VG wait here, right? And when we stop waiting for this, actually we need to do FMT print a land. Um, we're going to say that uh, work, actually we could do it like that, something like this. Sounds good, sounds good. So we're going to VG wait, and after we wait, we're going to close the Rezal channel, right? So if we close Rezal channel, this loop is going to basically stop, and it's going to trigger this uh, print statement, and everything is beautifully cleaned up um, like it should be. Yes, so now the only thing we need to do basically is uh, VG DOM heat, call DOM each time uh, this do work is basically completed. Yeah, that should actually work. I have no clue. It's uh, like basically just on the top of my head uh, and that can cause some problems sometimes. Let's press enter. Let's see what's going on here. So it's doing uh, the job here. And, and, and that's that. So basically something that's basically a problem is why is it not... Um, actually, to be honest, fuck that. I'm gonna do it like this, right? So the thing is, this is cleaned up for sure, right? This is cleaned up for sure, but the problem is that let me do something like um, be, the program actually exits faster than this. So what we're gonna do is enable to show you guys. Actually, we can do that, but what we're gonna do is a time sleep here of one second. Um, just to show you, actually time got seconds should be fine here, right? Uh, let's do it again. Let's see. Experimenting, guys, experimenting. Meanwhile, I'm drinking my, I'm sipping my coffee, why not? Yeah, so now it's working. So you can see uh, we basically have these um, functions that basically return their work perfectly fine. And then uh, it's going to say the work took six seconds. Yes, because um, the weakest link is six seconds here, right? Okay, uh, so why am I doing this stupid time sleep thing? Well, the thing is that uh, if we close this channel, the program is going to exit. And if the program is exiting, nothing can happen anymore, right? So the thing is that this will stop and it will print out this, but the program exits before it can even print this stuff, right? That's, that's what's happening. So that's why I'm doing this uh, cheat of uh, time.sleep so we can actually wait one second. So you're going to see that this is basically being triggered, that this function is being cleaned up, that we synchronized, that all the work is done, and that we don't need to loop anymore, right? So that's basically it, guys. Uh, like I said, it's 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 not like a production-ready uh, real-case scenario, but this should be a very good uh, example or, or set of examples so you can experiment, and it should actually um, give you some, some more context on when and why and how it all works a little bit more. So if you want to learn more about channels, because this is basically an unbuffered channel, uh, is uh, an unbuffered channel, yeah. If you want to learn more on when to use buffered, unbuffered, and all that stuff, I have some other videos on my channel if you want to learn more about channels and, and all that stuff in depth. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching, and I see you in the next video or live stream. Peace.